Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in Luminar AI and I've got a photo. I'm going to do it uh, two different ways. I'm going to edit in black and white and then edit it in color and just show you kind of a comparison of uh, the kind of impact you can have on a photo in really not a lengthy amount of time and yet still have photos that I think you like and, and that sort of thing. So let me show you. Here's the shot. I'm going to start out in Enhance AI and I'm just kind of jumping into this. I'm going to go high 70s and then I'm going to do you know, maybe mid 50s in the sky uh, for Sky Enhancer. And then I am going to take the temperature lower. I'm going to make this a bit bluer. By the way, if you were on the recent uh, Luminar AI, uh, the day long Skyloom deep dive thing, um, I edited this image in black and white there. So this may be um, something you've seen before if you were uh, attending that event. And if you did, thanks for attending. Um, if you didn't, that's okay. They're going to put it on YouTube, but I thought I would actually do this image two different ways just to show you kind of the power and the flexibility of Luminar and the kind of things that you can do to an image in a pretty quick amount of time. Now, I'm kind of running through this as I'm talking to you, so uh, I'm trying to uh, kind of do two things at once, which um, I find hard to do, and I, I don't really believe in the whole idea of multitasking, to be honest. I just think that means you're kind of just half-assing uh, two things at the same time. Nonetheless, I'm trying to do it. So uh, there we go. We've got a little negative structure to kind of uh, calm that uh, uh, that down a little bit. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go into, uh, well, I'm in luminance already. So I'm going to take the green down a bit because I'm going to darken that uh, grass that's over there in that bottom right corner. And I'm also going to darken the blue. And that's just because, um, as you may have seen in that um, deep dive session, I'm converting this to black and white. And even though, let me go back in color, it probably looks a little bit over the top. In black and white, it looks kind of normal, to be honest. I think it looks like a, not a dramatic, but a you know a little bit close to being a kind of a dramatic monochrome. Uh, but I'm going to make it more dramatic because, hey, you can do that with monochromes and uh, nobody picks on you for it. Uh, nobody says, hey, you're over the top there, man. Uh, they just say, well, that's a nice looking monochrome. Um, and that's what I'm going to make. So now that I've done that, let's see. I'm actually going to go back here. I think I was looking at the wrong figures. Uh, no, that's about right. Uh, I'm going to go more blue uh, reduction here. And that's something to think about, and that is that you can actually use the luminance in HSL even on a black and white photo simply because um, it's impacting the color that it's uh, in the base image. So I'm now going to jump to super contrast, and this is where you can kind of get into some fun customization of your image. It's really a great tool for kind of massaging the light, kind of shifting things around, kind of moving things uh, that sort of thing. So I'm going to work on that here a little bit. And then I always uh, use the balance sliders because they come in just super, super handy. And what I'm doing here is, as I already said, just making a little bit more of a dramatic monochrome. Let me show you what super contrast has done to the photo. There it is before the super contrast and after. You can see that's a fairly much more dramatic photo. So I think that looks pretty nice. I'm also going to go into toning over here and give it a little bit of the old blue that I like to give it, which is really just kind of something that um, I just kind of prefer to do. Um, hitting uh, hitting it, the shadows and the highlights with a little bit of this blue tone basically makes it look um, a little bit more silvery, kind of a moonlight look, which I like quite a bit. So there it is without traditional black and white, and there it is with, and that is uh, more of a uh, monochrome. So there's my uh, monochrome. There it is before and after. Uh, and let me show you this sliding. You can see I took that bird out that was in the water. But there's my dramatic monochrome. I think that photo is looking pretty good. I'm now going to pop over. I've got another copy of this photo. And this one, um, I'm kind of winging it, to be honest. I'm just going to kind of kind of have a play, see what kind of stuff I come up with, and see if I end up liking it as much as I like the monochrome. But um, having practiced with the monochrome a bit, because I did rehearse before doing the, um, uh, the deep dive, um, I did not uh, really do anything with color. And so I thought I would come in and just kind of see what I came up with. So here I am, and I'm seeing. Uh, hopefully... Uh, Hopefully we come up with something nice here together, and if not, it's all your fault. No, I'm kidding. It's uh, it's obviously up to me here to to do this. Uh, some of the moves are kind of similar, as you can tell. So I'm basically doing the same negative structure in the same kind of spots and in the same kind of sloppy masking job. But um, you know, there's some things that um, I would repeat, whether it was a monochrome or a black and white photo. And I think the use of structure, or in this case, negative structure, would be the same. 
Um, I'm going to go into the luminance here. Uh, I'm actually going to go into the saturation. And in the blue, I'm going to take the saturation down a little bit on the blue because it's just too much. But I do want to pop it in the orange and the reds because I like that castle to really kind of stand out. And I'm going to give it some luminance as well in the orange and the red. See if I can get that to kind of pop a little bit. And I think that's looking pretty okay there. I think I'll actually go back to saturation and give it a little bit more. And let's see if the yellow makes it much of an impact there. No, just down there in the bottom. But uh, let me go back to luminance and I'm gonna pop the yellow luminance as well. And I think what I'm gonna do here is take the green luminance down like I did in the um, black and white version. I don't really wanna distract anyone from the um, kind of the castle, right? So let me turn that off there. The castle is before. And there it is after. I think I actually may try a golden hour just to see if that pop. Yeah, that gives me a nice little bit of pop on that as well. As you can see, I'm getting color on the stones down below. I'm gonna have to go fix that. I don't wanna do anything else there. I think I'm gonna go in and do a little bit of mystical just because I like it. It gives it a little bit of that uh, higher contrast look, which I've kind of gone for in the monochrome, but I'm also going for here in the color version. I think that adds a nice little pop to it. There it is before and after. I think that looks pretty good. And let's try super contrast on this one. As you can see, I use some of the same tools and uh, you know, it just depends on the look you're going for. But these tools, whether it's a monochrome or black and white, can have a powerful impact on your photo. And um, I kind of like what I'm getting here to a certain extent. I just need to kind of check this out. I think something like that. Let me show you the super contrast. There it is before and there it is after. Not a major difference, but I like it. I'm gonna go get um, a basic local mask and I'm gonna get a gradient and I'm gonna pull that thing over here. Uh, I'm gonna line it up if I could get a little bit straighter, line it up with those rocks. And what I wanna do is make it a little bit cooler and a little bit less saturated and a little bit less vibrant because I don't really care about uh, anybody. And in fact, I'm gonna lower the exposure a little bit as well. I don't really care about anybody wasting a lot of time and attention in that lower corner. So I think I've got that looking good. Let me look at my uh, before and after. We've come a pretty long way on this color version. I mean, pretty uh, massive difference. I actually still think it's too blue, so I'm gonna go back up in here and I'm gonna go to color, and I'm actually gonna take the saturation overall down a little bit. It feels a little bit heavy-handed, even for yours truly, who uh, does love the color. But let me go to saturation and go to the blue and pull that down just a little bit. I think that looks a little bit better, a little bit more realistic. And that's the thing, like I was saying at the beginning of the video, monochromes, you can kind of go over the top and really push those pixels around and people don't really look at it and say, oh, that's just, you know, clown vomit. But if you have a lot of color, it just can be really distracting to viewers. And so it may make sense to tone down some of the colors and not be as as dramatic as you could be with a monochrome photo. That's my before, that's my color version. I like that, I think I'm gonna stop there. Let me go back to my monochrome. There's my monochrome. And actually now that I look at it, I actually think I would probably um, go in here and brighten that photo a little bit overall. Maybe just to give it a little bit more pop. I think something like that looks a little bit better for the monochrome. And now going back to my color version, I'm pretty happy with that but I also might try a slight exposure increase. Uh, nah, yeah, maybe just a tiny bit. I don't wanna go over the top because these highlights are gonna get out of control, which of course I can help control with the highlight slider here or further work down there in super contrast, but I'm not trying to create a lot of work for myself. I'm trying to show you that you can get the same photo done two different ways, have very different looks about it. There it is as a dramatic monochrome with a little bit of that silvery kind of moonlight tint to it. And I think that looks really good. Um, I like that quite a bit. And then here it is as a color photo. And even with a fair amount of color, I don't think it's over the top. That's my personal opinion. You feel, uh, feel free to disagree if you do. The point is you can quickly take a photo and go from one particular look to another completely on your own, not to mention the fact that you could use templates to make some of this easier if you're experimenting. But I like to kind of challenge myself, get in there, hack around, see what I come up with. That's what I came up with today, my friends. Hope it gives you some ideas about the different things you can do in Luminar. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon with more videos. You guys take care of yourselves out there. I'll see you soon, and adios.